Hey guys, welcome back to another VB script tutorial brought to you by QTPTutorial.net. I am so glad that everybody is here joining on us, watching these VB script fundamental tutorials to take you guys to the next level, to make you amazing, fantastic automation engineers that will be unstoppable in the workforce. I'm glad you guys are here. So. If you guys noticed a little bit of weirdness in my voice, I am getting over a cold, so just excuse that, bear with me, I don't want to stop recording these videos, I want to push through it, so sometimes, you know, we have to make sacrifices, and no problems for me. I want to give a quick overview of everything that we went over in the past several videos, and then we'll move on to the next fantastic topic of loops. So. We began by covering the VB script basics. We went through the syntax rules where I introduced you guys to the few syntax rules that VB script has and some conventions to follow. Afterwards, we went through a number of statements, probably some of the most important ones and some less important, but it's all that I wanted to let you guys know just to get you a little bit familiar and as we progress through the lectures, you guys will learn everything, I promise. And if you don't, you can stop me and say, hey, bro, you better teach me something else because you promised me that you would teach me everything. And if I'm not doing my job, I want you guys to tell me so that I help you out because that's my goal is to teach you guys everything from A to Z. But yeah, so we covered all these statements. And now... I think you guys are ready for some real fun times, some real great programming, some logic, where we begin to plant the seeds for automation to sprout you guys into beautiful automation flowers. So loops, what are loops all about? Well, first, I want to show you guys a spreadsheet that I created. and. This spreadsheet, let's imagine that I did some automation and I extracted this spreadsheet full of data containing about, let me see, containing 12,000 records. Very little. I've worked with files containing millions upon millions of records, probably like 500 million records. But this is just a small one. But for us human beings, it seems like a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff is going on here. And so I extracted this data through my automation, and now I need to do something with it. What are some things that I can do with it? Well, this could be the actual output of a test case, right? Imagine I went to some website, I extracted this, and I had my expected data, the data that I inserted, and I want to make sure that the data comes out from the application the exact way that it went in. And so this is my actual output, and I want to compare this cell by cell to the other spreadsheet and make sure that it matches. Another thing that I may want to do, another automation scenario, is I may have extracted all this data, and I want to find a certain value to see that it exists. Because if this value exists, maybe it's a unique identifier for some spreadsheet that we put into a test case and so we put the spreadsheet in and now we need to get it out and we know that it's a spreadsheet based on a unique identifier that exists in the data the third scenario that may exist is you may just want to find a cell in here that contains a piece of data so for example let's say that this is data signifying the incomes of a population of people and you want to find out how many cells in here or how many people contain incomes over $700 per week. Now, that's a very reasonable thing to do. And with automation, it makes it very easy. But manually, it's a very tough process. Some of you guys may be wise enough to learn how to use Excel filters. Very good for you. But it's still a repetitive monotonous and tough job and so that's where automation comes in gives you solutions to problems like that and you guys will get to see something similar today 
So now, let me give you a scenario. I want to find a cell that contains the value zero. This is what we're going to work on, and this is how I'm going to teach you guys loops. Now, this cell contains value zero. How do I find it? Okay, so working with loops, you first have to create pseudocode. And this is actually not just in regards to loops. This is regards to anything. Any type of coding you do, you need to create pseudocode. And pseudocode is simply your manual process converted into some kind of English part programming terms. Okay? So let's go through this, guys. It will all connect as we go through the process. So let me open this up. And I'm going to just start typing here. Change up this color. Make it larger. All right. So. This is our problem. Now, steps to solution. How are we going to solve this problem? Well, first, right, you are going to open the spreadsheet based on the path. Right? So someone gives you a path, you open that spreadsheet. You're doing this manually. And we're going to convert this into code. Next thing you want to do is you want to look at these columns and they they have no significant meaning and so you just want to find the value zero so now what are you going to do you're going to start probably up here logically now guys the stuff that we're about to learn will involve learning some logic so you just have to think in the most efficient ways to perform a certain action so we're going to start here at a1 and what are we going to do we're going to go through cell by cell looking for zero right so we can go like this. I mean, I can visually see no zero here. How about now I go like this, visually see no cell here, right? Go here, no cell, so on and so forth, right? So let's convert that into pseudocode. So what did I do? I start at A1, check for value, right? And now if the value is zero, then stop we got it. If the value is not zero, then we continue to the next cell. Is this right? Does this seem reasonable, logical to you guys? Let me show you again. We start here, right? If the value is zero, we stop. We won. We found our cell. If the value is not zero, we move on to the next one, right? Is it zero? No. Let's move on to the next one. Zero? No. No, 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 and so on and so forth. Okay, until we find it. I don't know where it is. It may not even exist here, right? So let's see. We check for value. If the value is zero, then we stop. We got it. If the value is not zero, then we continue to the next cell. And so we go and so forth. And so now we come over here and we go to go to cell B1, right? And what do we do there? We do this. right and if it's not b1 we're going to go to c1 and check for the contents and so on and so forth do you guys see this let me do one more just to make my point do you guys see the repetition here right you go to a cell you do something to it and based on that you continue or not so you just go to a cell go to a cell you can check the conditions go to a cell check the conditions go to a cell it's so repetitive, and that's where the beauty of a loop comes in. The loop, what it allows you to do is literally replace a few things with variables, and then you can circle through one thing. Let me show you guys what I mean.